The idea of belonging and brotherhood is something I'm wondering if you can talk to me about. Reading your book, there is a sense almost that this is a world that I want to belong to, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I entirely want to belong to it either. I think the fact that it was so alien and so strange to me was actually what fascinated me about writing about that world of soldiers. And I guess I was really just curious about what men talk about when women aren't around. And, um, you know, I don't know if I've got that right, but I went with, you know, my feel about what I think it must have been like to, to be a career soldier. So, you know, I was curious about what would be going through their heads. This, that idea of bonding, um, do you think part of the way then that you bond and trying to forget what's going on about you is through the tiny details, the domestic rituals, for example, or you bond through something that is still and unchanging like the night sky or the earth? I'd say probably all of the above. I think that's the case for, for my men. That what I really wanted to do with this book was to get past all those cliches that I find really alienating and I find have never really given me much of a sense Which of like what it would be like to be out on the wall. The image of Custer as the long-haired hero, the image of the brave man riding into battle at the last moment of, of Little Bighorn. That's part of the legend, but that's two days of war. And I was interested in what Benteen, my main character, calls the nine-tenths nothing. Mm. You know, this weird combination of, of bore and boredom and terror, I think, would be you know, <laughs> what yeah. you'd be experiencing. Yeah, Benteen is a really fascinating historical character. And I came I was actually researching the Custers, and I came across him, and there was something about his voice that I found very moving. This is a man who basically saved the rest of the 7th Cavalry's lives at Little Bighorn. He seemed to me so fantastically clear in his ability to see through the myth of Custer. When, when you're writing about as well something like history that you have to have all these different perspectives and the focus and the little details purely because it can't be just one voice. What I was interested in was the trying to get to all the sort of moments that the, that the big picture histories tend to leave out. Um, and I think if, if there's one thing that novels can do these days, it's actually to bring in the sort of details, um, the ambigu ambiguity and the complexity that tends to get left out of a, a soundbite culture. Mm. The way that you mentioned before your collection of characters, you referred to them, I think it was, as my boys or my men. Can you talk to me about that, the moulding of these men? You know, I've called this my dark love letter to America. Mm. There was some, something that I had, to, you know, some reason why I had to to write this book and you I just thought I was crazy yeah I, I thought you know it's someone else's history it's you know I've, I'm sort of an idiot you know you've chosen uh, this you're probably the most iconic moment in American history and it took me a long time to be able to kind of find a way of writing around that and it was the moment where I thought right this is my war these are my men oh, yeah. my characters and I'm going to write them the way that I want I want to write them, that I started to be able to write that book. If I thought I'm self-consciously going to try and write an American novel about American characters, um, I don't think I'd be sitting here today talking about it. Each book for me is about, is not about coming out at the end of it as a certain sort of writer um, who now has a particular sort of style. For me, the great pleasure in writing is to try and find a form and a style that suits subject matter. Sometimes that can take me you know, a very long time, or sometimes it can mm. take me very little. But for me, the pleasure is um, is shape and is is form and is language. Um, so I'm I'm not sort of trying to express a kind of way that I always write. I'm mm. always trying to find some sort of new lang you know, new language for me to fit the, a feeling I have about a particular sort of subject. Mm.